page. Thanks so much for coming back to my book talk. As promised, I have the first book review prepared and I'll be reviewing today. Drum roll, please. <gasps> the Collected Regrets of Clover. <laughs> anyway, um, so this book is quite dear to my heart. I rather liked it because it was a healing experience for me. It is about death, it is about love, it is about finding oneself, even at an age like like in your 30s, you think you have it all figured out, but some of us are still figuring it out, and that's pretty much what our protagonist is doing. What can I say about the collected regrets of Clover? Well, our main protagonist, Clover, she's 36 years old, she lives in her late grandfather's flat, which is where she grew up, and she has two cats and a dog, and she's very socially awkward. She's been dealing with death for a very long time. In fact, her first experience with death is actually watching her grade school teacher fold over from a heart attack. And she kind of gets treated a lot differently for being fascinated by this fact at a young age. And you'll see as the story progresses, the impact that her grandfather has had on her life. And at 36, she's still figuring it out. Her grandfather, who is no longer with her, she has a difficult time letting go of the fact that he is not there, that he's gone. And her career path as a death doula, which is basically someone who helps those in their last moments um, transition from living to, well, that dreadful D word. Um, she helps them. She helps them transition. And she also helps their loved ones to make peace and to accept uh, what's happening. But she does it because she feels guilty. And you learn this as you read along. She feels guilty about not being there for her grandfather in his final moments. So she does what she can to do that for other people. And our character does develop. She does become more open-minded. She does allow her guard to get down just a bit because her guard is quite, quite high. But what we learn through Clover is basically that you can't stop living just because you're aware that life comes to an end at some point. In fact, to quote the book, in order to live, I mean, no, excuse me. <laughs> In order to have a beautiful death, you must live a beautiful life. And you do kind of leave with the sense of, you know what, I'm still here. Those who are no longer with me, they would have wanted me to carry on with their memory and to honor their memory by letting other people know who they were and what they meant to me. And I think for those of us who have lost important figures in our life, pets, family members, friends. It's important to know that just because they're gone doesn't mean that we have to stop remembering them. In fact, it also means that we don't stop living just out of guilt, out of fear about what's next. We keep going. We keep going like our protagonist does. And what makes this book even more layered and more heartfelt is the fact that Clover finds love and she finds friendship and she's finding herself and she is 36 and she is proof in the pudding that none of us, none of us really know what we're, do what we're doing in life. We're figuring it out. We're taking it day by day. And I highly suggest that if that's something that you don't know how to do for yourself maybe pick this book up and look through the lens of clover who also struggles but she manages to find her footing and it's a beautiful beautiful journey well that's all i hope this book review covered the basis and if you'd like a more in-depth review of the collected regrets of clover you can follow my wordpress blog where i talk about it in a much lengthier lengthier way Thank you for stopping by. I hope you'll be back for the next one and yeah, 
later. <sighs>